The 2017 BMW IBS F World Championships continues. Saturday morning means it is the final two slides of women's skeleton at Koenigsee in Bavaria. Good morning, everybody, on a stunning day. After yesterday's second heat was cancelled because of a snowstorm, we now have perfect conditions to decide our medals. I'm Martin Haven, alongside me, Olympic champion Amy Williams. And Amy, this track, it's in perfect condition this morning. It could hardly be a better day for sliding. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful out there. Unlike that yesterday when the snow started, today it is crisp, it is clear, blue sky. The track could have been well prepared. Yesterday it started off like that, and then obviously in the afternoon the snow just started, you know, after the first sort of 10 sliders or whatever. So they had to cancel it. This is the first heat coming on through there, and we did have some very incredibly fast times. So that was Elizabeth Farge there, going into Tina Herman, who managed to pop down a 52.08. She had a very good um, first run, was placed second. That's her going through the S-Bends over the finish. So the Germans definitely were starting to dominate yesterday, and then Jacqueline Lowling, who got a wicked, a very good fast track record in the team competition a few days ago, and she came out with a 52.02. However, the snow did start on that second run, so they decided to scrap it to uh, cancel the second run, and today it's fresh. I am expecting a track record here from Jacqueline Lowling in the morning because of the conditions being so perfect. Well, 600 of a second separate the top two Germans and then 200s in the medal battle between Elizabeth Varche and Olympic champion Lizzie Yarnold. And we've got similarly tight battles all the way up and down the field. So we saw in the second heat, even before the snow had started, a couple of changes when sliders who had corrected an error from the first heat moved up a couple and moved down. Now in our second Second heat, we went 20 down to one. In the third heat, despite the fact the second heat didn't happen, we will start with the fastest slider and go through our 31 sled field. And there is Tina Herman, the reigning world champion, teammate Jacqueline Lerling, Anna Fernstedt, who's also in the top half dozen, and everybody getting limbered up at the top of the track. Lisbeth Yarnold, Lizzie back after a year away and in very good form last night. And I think everybody, as soon as the snow started, they realised the second heat was going to be cancelled. Jacqueline Lerling somehow managed to come through in third place, uh, despite the fact that she lost a second and a half. Everybody else had lost two or three seconds on their slide, so clearly it was never going to be a race. The jury made the correct decision, and we will have a three-heat world championship. Jacqueline Lerling goes off first. She broke the track record by nearly two seconds last Saturday evening. She could do the same again this Saturday morning, possibly not by the same margin, but the ice is hard and fast. The air is clear and crisp. And if she can take her eyes away from the stunning vistas around this track, she's got every chance of putting herself another step clear of the field. Jacqueline Lerling from Winterberg. The first sled on day two, the final day of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Championships. The overnight leader by just six hundredths of a second. And a woman who set a new track record last Saturday evening. Can she do it again? Let's see what her start time was, a 5.21. She doesn't have the fastest start, uh, Jacqueline, but she knows how to drive a sled, and she knows where to get the speed from every single one of these corners. So coming out of S4 there, down this slightly wonky straight, they just have to absolutely nail it, only taking that one little tap to be able to make it through that bottom half of the straight. This is the cries, all the big 360. Getting out of here is crucial for speed to the bottom of the track, and she nailed that. You can hear that scraping, and that's the helmet on the ice with the pressures and G-forces that some of these athletes go through. So 51-74. All right, 51-74 is half a second away from the track record, so maybe it's just a little frosty still in this first heat. In the second heat, in about an hour and a half from now, she may get a chance to go quicker. 
So Jacqueline Learning, it looked like a nice clean run, and she just has the ability to generate speed low down on track. I mean, look, she's taller than her coaches. She is a tall athlete. So there's her coming out of the exit of S4, the four S bends. You have to take that little tiny tip, uh, like hit on the corner, just to get the right angle coming on through. So she's grown up watching and having an idol as Marianne Tees, who was an awesome slider and driver for Germany a few uh, years ago. The red vest is our world champion. Tina Herman claimed the title last year in Innsbruck in Austria. The shortest track despite having one of the poorest starts in the field. And Herman again is a huge threat. Six hundredths of a second behind after the first heat. And now look, a quicker start by six hundredths. She's tied for the lead as she lies down. Yeah, the start is so important in skeleton. You spend your whole summer training, becoming powerful, sprinting, uh, and then you're having to pop that onto the sled, pushing the sled, but you've got to be able to drive. And these Germans will know exactly where the speed is in every single one of these corners. Herman still in the lead as she gets into the Kreisel. 110.2 kilometers an hour, good speed, 68.5, but Lurling was faster, so Tia Herman is behind. Yeah, she had a great season last year, winning four gold medals. She hasn't quite managed to, to get the same results this year, uh, whether she's been testing a few different things. And you can see here, this is where Lolling is so awesome because Tina has just dropped down 15 hundredths behind her teammates. So six hundredths after one heat becomes 15 hundredths of a second deficit again. Lurling made a mistake out of the Kreisel, brushed the wall as she got into the lower labyrinth. But Tina Herman still lost ground below the Kreisel. Yeah, that's her getting onto the sled and she tucks in so small on the sled. Straight away, you can just see her using her head. Athletes can steer using their heads, their shoulders. Here's our dartfish comparison between the two German girls. And you can just see those oscillations, the rise and falls and it's really important to know where to steer. And a helmet length on that shot is about a hundredth of a second. So that's the sort of distance we're talking about. A hundredth of a second there is just under a foot. Lisbeth Varche, now she's about a quarter second behind the German duo, but two hundredths behind her is the reigning Olympic champion, Lizzie Arnold. So you think there's a battle on for this medal as well? I think so. She's already got two gold medals of the season so far. She's got an incredibly fast start. So her start is going to be faster than the Germans. This is definitely where she can move on up. 5.15, so not quite as uh, fast as her start time yesterday at 5.05. But if she can keep her head together, she is really chomping on the bit to get in front of one of those German girls. Yeah, and she's really had a strong season, as you said, this year. Last year of her rookie season, it all sort of went very wrong. This year started with a win in Whistler, and the season has been on a real up. And she's in the red behind the leader. 1900s at the start, 1600s, and 110. Point two, very good speed. It's quite high there on that second oscillation, but did control it well to, to miss out on that uh, hit. She got a bronze medal last year in the World Championships, and so for her, two years ago, I'm sorry, for her to be able to get a medal in this year's world is really important for all these girls and their personal fundings. Um, it, it, you know, it's a big deal. 52-15 is the slide, and she's gone from 2700s overnight after one run to 6600s behind. That's how good the Germans are. That's how good local knowledge is for getting the right runner choice, the right runner setup. And then, of course, the girls know how to slide this track superbly as well. So Elizabeth Farche drifts a little away, and here in the Kreisel, perhaps some of that damage was done, Amy. Yeah, you can see she comes in a little bit higher, so she didn't quite catch that first steer, and she's got a lot more dramatic highs and lows, those oscillations. She controls it well, because she gets through that really funny kind of camber of the straight there, but that shows the speed, and it means that the Germans are still that, you know, 66 hundredths in front. You saw Clive Yarnell down at the bottom, there's, <laughs> there's Elizabeth Farche. And where Clive is, Lizzie won't be far away. Dad watching down at the bottom and mum as well. Here's the Olympic champion after a year away. Can she put herself back in the medals at this year's World Championships? 5.09, that's another strong start from Lizzie. And that's the fastest in the field so far. Yes, Lizzie always uh, steps up to these big events. So let's see how she comes out of these S-bends. You're right, she's got her little fan club at the bottom. 
good exit of four there, just taking the hit, and you can just see that perfect body position. So really quiet, good energy. Isn't she? The head's not moving, the toes aren't moving, almost nothing happening, and that means the steers are so right. She is definitely chasing down Elizabeth Vache here. She is, by the looks of it, definitely going to move up into third place, wow. if not one better. She has blown by Vache. The lead is 1500s, first to second. She's 1900s behind the leader. What a run from the Olympic champion. Wow, blown by Elizabeth Vache by four tenths of a second. And she is 900s behind Tina Herman, a quarter of a second away from winning this. In the final heat, there will still be everything to play for. That's an awesome run by Lizzie. She's actually just got down in the fastest run. That, that time of 51-71 actually beat Jacqueline Lolin. So, oh, come on, Lizzie. She's got another run after this. Things could change around. Wow. This is the sport of skeleton. So that is an awesome exit of uh, Kreisel, actually better than Nolan's uh, exit. That is exactly where the speed comes out. A clean exit from Kreisel means you can carry every tiny little of a bit of speed through to the bottom. That is one happy girl. Do you know what? The more pressure there is, the more fun she is having, and that's part of the secret. And this little Belgian, as she calls herself, Kim Marman's just 21 years old. She has that same attitude. The bigger the spotlight, the more fun she is having. Fifth after the first day's action, she could move up here as well. Yeah, this is Kim's biggest run of her career. She did so well yesterday. Three weeks ago, she was actually six in this event. So she obviously likes the track, she gets on with it. And, you know, I'm quite surprised to see her in this position. But you know what? Let's see how consistent she can be. She went to the Christopher Schuler, the school at the bottom of the track, with Tina Herman. They were in the same year. She started sliding with Tina Herman on this track. She started sliding actually for Germany. This, of all tracks, is her home track. She knows this well. She could really capitalize. Yeah, and you can see that she looks comfortable and confident on the sled. She's not doing any of these panic steers. Her form is brilliant. She had a great exit out of Kreisel there. And so far, you know, she is doing a good, solid run. 5-10 start and at the line of 52-12. And she is just 500s behind Elizabeth Farche. So she could move up into fourth position, possibly not into the medals. That's half a second away. She's going to need some help from somebody. But Kim Milemans is really continuing with this stunning performance. Yeah, she actually just got a quicker time also than uh, Elizabeth Farge. So it is showing you, you know, a little bit of confidence from yesterday. There's the dartfish and look how similar they are. You know, you can really see the rise and fall. It's very similar coming out, dropping, just has a very slight little skim there. Made the same touch on the wall there that Jacqueline Lerling did, and you saw why, because their lines were identical. That's that's the German line. So for her, she really wants that top five. That is a, a real big jump in her own personal funding. Six after the, 30, uh, half the first day is our second Canadian. Jacqueline Lerling leading a tighter field than overnight. And Mimi Reneva, first year at the world level, first world championships, first World Cup season, already a winner in Samaritz, the greatest track on the planet. Now, what can she do here? Can she start to make moves as well? Yeah, she's definitely going to be uh, looking on up. She hasn't managed to uh, start quite as uh, quick as her first heat yesterday, which she was six, six uh, hundredths quicker yesterday in her push. However, let's see how she gets down. She's just taken a little bit of a knock there. Well, only one hundredth of a second off the lead. Mimi Reneva, if she can hold this speed below the Chrysal, has got a real chance to move up and become a medal contender. Decent exit, oh, had to really haul it away from the wall, but still carries the speed. She's gone three tenths down now. Yeah, I mean, she had great speed in Sam Ritz that she won a few weeks ago by 1.8 of a second. So, you know, incredible. She has got those skills, but can she get it right on, you know, different tracks? Each track kind of suits different athletes in a different kind of way. 52-25, so she moves to eight tenths away from the lead. 
And oh, she was just a hundredth behind going on to the Chrysler. And that's where the German knowledge really helps them. So she didn't quite get that out of uh, the S4 because she took a little hit on both sides of the wall. Here, you can see her lifting her shoulder up. Look at her right out arm and her shoulder. It's coming up. You know, it's not quite having the confidence there and uh, being comfortable in what your line is because that aerodynamically then is not good. Yeah, she was hauling it off the Chrysler there into what the Canadians call the doodles. She remains in sixth position. Now behind her by just seven hundreds after the first day of action was Lelda Prejelena. So you're seeing the gap to the leader, but it's these little battles up and down the order that are going to be important. 700s is the blink of the human eye. So Lelda again has a target in her sights. Yeah, 5.09, so a little bit slower. Well, everyone's start time today does seem to be a little slower. Whether that's because the ice at the top is a little bit sticky, sometimes it's very hard to, to tell the ice conditions. You can see it's beautiful down the track, but at the start, because it's a little bit more covered, it can sometimes just get a little bit sticky and the sled doesn't quite run in those grooves. A little frosty, a little harder ice for the spikes to grip on as well. It can all make a fractional difference. Better Chrysler than her first one, where she was very wavy. She's still seventh on the splits, but don't forget, just seven hundredths of a second behind Mimi Reneva of Canada. That's her target. Can she overhaul the Canadian girl? A good bottom part of the track. Will she pop up across the line in six? Oh, six fastest heat. The 52.25, exactly the same as Reneva has just done. So the gap remains 700s with one run to go. Yeah, she had a great solid run from Kreisel onwards there. I think what let her down was just a little bit at the top. She was a little bit wobbly going into the very first corner and then just took the two little taps out of the S-bends. Here's her in the start. Actually, interestingly, runs on the other side to uh, most of the girls. Getting into her position there, and her sled just starts to drift across, so she's having to fight. That can be enough just to yeah. take away, you know, a hundredth or two of a second. I think she's the first woman to start in that right-hand groove as well, so others will see that and go, hmm, I might cho choose the other side. Next up, Anna Fernstedt, the youngest of the German trio. She is from Berchtesgaden, originally born in Prague, and she too went to the Christopher Schuler down at the bottom here. She was too old to start luge, too young for bobsleigh when she came to the track, so skeleton is her choice. Yeah, let's see if she can move up. Uh, two weeks ago in the World Cup event, she came third here. So she had a really bad first run yesterday. I'm hoping she doesn't predict to move on up. So um, she's only 100 slower there on her start time than she was yesterday. So she has really, you know, got a bit of aggression here. She wants to move on up a few places. Well, she's tied to the hundredth of a second with Elder Prejelena. And interestingly, she pushed off from the very same right-hand groove as the athletes see it. And she had that little drift away as well. Eighth place on the split time, so she's behind the Latvian as she gets to the Kreisel. But it's from here on down that the Germans make their moves. Yeah, just see how smooth she goes through there. She's a beautiful gliding athlete on this track, same as Lurling. And you can just see the confidence, the calm. And look, she is creeping on up. Up to sixth position on the split time. She picks up two places. Four fastest round, she moves up to fourth. What a sensational run from Anna Fernstedt of Germany. The 20-year-old leaps from tied seventh up to fourth place. She was eighth on the split time, so the Chrysler, bam, right down there in the lower lap. Yep. That's where the speed is. That shows you how bad her first run was yesterday. She could really be a medal contender moving on up and actually putting down the performance that she obviously knows she can do. Wow. I think, you know, we're going to see a difference in her, especially now with one, one run to go. Three weeks ago, the German girls swept the podium. One, two, three. Lerling Hermann and Fernstedt. Fernstedt has to get by Lizzie Arnold to complete that again, though. Oh, have you not got goosebumps? Well, that's enough to wake you up in the morning, isn't it? Now then, here's our Olympic bronze medalist from Sochi 2014, the start record holder there as well. And as she is here, Elena Nikitina 
486 she started 487 and 88 yesterday 86 is the track record can she break it this morning no 100th away from her own start record but comfortably by two tenths the quickest start in the field yeah she is our quickest starter and obviously then the ice hasn't affected her so maybe the other girls are just that little bit more tense their muscles aren't being quite relaxed and they can't quite push as fast but look at her so far Oh, big skid there. First the commentator, as soon as she Oops. has a good exit, <laughs> breaks into a skid. And look at the Christ. And this is really where she loses so much time, just zigging and zagging up and down all over the place. Yeah, a push can only take you so far. And then actually those skills and the knowledge of driving need to take over. And she hasn't quite got it. She was quite messy there in the Chrysal. She had that big skid going down the straight. And that is just going to be bleeding the speed. Leader coming onto the straight, fourth at the Chrysal, ninth out of it. And a 52-45 slide for Elena Nikitina. And as you say, she's still relatively new to the sport. She's got that explosive power at the start. And like her male counterpart, Alexander Tretikov, a decade ago, she needs time on the ice so she can carry that speed further down the track. Oh, she... There you are. There's her out of uh, the S4. Takes the hit there, but a bit too hard. And that's why she ends up going into a skid and fighting with her sled. Now, when the sled there goes sideways, it is like brakes going on. That is not what you want to happen. Elena Nikitina in ninth position, 10th of our starters on day two of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Championships is Janine Flock of Austria, silver medalist last year in the world. Oh, she's very jittery, you see the trembling fingers as she does up her helmet. Everybody ramped up with adrenaline for this final day of action. Yeah, Janine is actually ranked third in the World Cup points. So this is a really disappointing championship so far for her. She's been struggling all week with getting the Chrysal. And obviously, as we know, that is where you can lose the speed. She's looking good on the sled. She's got good, solid lines. That start there was actually four hundredths of a second better than her start yesterday. So let's see how she can cope with the Chrysal and if she can carry on the speed down and through. Another long rangey athlete with superb aerodynamic form, but the Chrysal a little wavy. 68.4 miles an hour, second fastest, but she throws it all away, drills the wall in the labyrinth. Yeah, I mean, she is a skilled, experienced slider. She got a gold medal in Lake Placid at the start of the season. She can win when it all comes together, but that is the point. This is a sport where you have to get every single element right and be consistent to, uh, to be up there in those top medal positions all the time. She does move ahead of Nicotina, though. So that was, you know, currently in ninth place, but she's going to be disappointed with that exit of prize or taking such a big hit. And it, the, the difference it made, she was 0.3 of a mile an hour off the pace in the Chrysal, three miles an hour off the pace at the next so time. Look at that there. That. Her whole body is getting lifted up off of the sled, and then she's having to fight through this uh, strange kind of labyrinth at the end. Just too high, dropping out. I mean, there, you know, you could bleed several hundreds of a second there, and then you don't have that through to the speed for the big corners at the bottom. I need pointing out, she was doing 70 miles an hour when she hit the wall like that. Jacqueline Lurling leads, but there is a quarter of a second covering the medal positions. It's anybody's race to win. Outside the top 10 by just a couple of hundreds after the first heat, American rookie Kendall Westenberg in her first World Championships. Kendall, 26-year-old, originally from California. She's not our quickest uh, starter. Yesterday she was uh, 19th fastest of the stop to the top, but managed to come down in 11th, so she does drive very, very well. That I said, it's her first world. She was in the World Championships in Eagles last year, finished in 16th place. So to be on the fringes of the top 10 here shows the improvement in season two. Oh, and again, that big hit on the exit of the cry. So you could see the toe dragging as she came in the final pressure. She knew she was late. Yeah, cries are tricky corners and they just get some people. And um, 
It's a confidence thing in a lot of the cry you've got that big 360, you have three oscillations, so they're the big waves, highs and lows, and your sled wants to drop up and down. You've got to know exactly where you are in the cry to do your steer, and that's why so many people struggle with them. 52.96 for Kendall. Now, she was only 200 in front of Jane Channel of Canada, who spent 25 snowy minutes in the leader's box yesterday before the race was cancelled. And that drill, look, that was actually yeah. even harder than Janine You can see her whole sled is actually lifting up and she's almost diagonal on the sled. She's basically just missing the oscillations. And so you have so much pressure at the end of that corner that the, the corner actually then runs out and your sled just drops. It's got nowhere to go apart from hit that inside wall. How much does that hurt? Well, luckily for the girls, it is mostly the sled that hits and then obviously the body is like shifting, but it can, yeah, a few bruises. Well, Jane Channel moved from 12th to 1st yesterday. We sent the top 20 down in reverse order and it started snowing just after she had gone. She had a good run, but not two and a half seconds better than the field. So she was rather sheepishly in the leader's box for about 20 minutes as everybody failed to beat her time before the second heat was eventually cancelled. But Jane, a very quick starter, third fastest start yesterday. Let's see what she can do. That spur is just really dragging people across there. And you can see that her start there was 200 slower. She has got one of the fastest starts, but I can just see everyone needs to watch out for that because it's obviously going a little bit wonky. And the problem is, if that's where you habitually start, changing your position is going to probably have a worse effect than taking that little steer. You have to watch the other athletes, though, and then drop a toe before it happens. Dropping a toe will just change the angle on the slide. Good-looking run from Jane Channel again. Doesn't get the big hit. She was in ninth on the split times going into the Chrysal. Eleventh coming out, but didn't have the hit that Kendall Westenberg had. Didn't have the hit Janine Flock had. Can she move into the top ten? She's ahead of Westenberg. Can she move ahead of Nikita No, no at the line? She's four tenths behind her. So there's a big target still for the final heat. A 52-66 slide, three tenths of a second on that run faster Kendall Wessenberg, but you see her bury her head, she knows that there was more to come. Yeah, she's got talent, this girl. I think she came six in the World Cup in Eagles um, earlier on in the season. So, you know, she's up and coming, and when it goes right, it does, but clearly she is struggling here, still with the Chrysal, really messy down this camber, hitting twice and really fighting her way through. It's a tricky part of the track here. You can see there's a left camber, there's a right camber, and you have to get your angles perfectly spot on to sort of get that needle through the, the thread through that kind of wonky straight. Jane Channel moves up a spot. Now, can Laura Dees do the same? She followed Jane up the order yesterday evening, kind of knew that it was not going to remain as a result. And she's just 700 behind Jane after the first heat. 4.99, another excellent getaway. Doesn't let yesterday's disappointment get to her. She knows she needs a good run this morning. Yeah, look, Lizzie, was, uh, Laura here was very disappointed with how yesterday went, and she's really going to want to uh, move on up. She's got an awesome start. She looks good on the sled, head a little bit high looking. Let's see how she comes out of the prize, or just using her feet there to do the stairs. Well, she's up to 10th place on the splits, a little ding on the wall, 12th position. Don't forget, she was 13th behind Jane Channel and Kendall Wessenberg after the first heat. And hear her helmet dragging on the ice as she buries her head. She's up to 11th place. Going to move up two spots at the moment of the line. She does move up two spots, and she is two tenths away. Now, we've seen with Lizzie Arnold, and we saw with Laura yesterday, they make no attempt to break hard and stand up. They just allow the outrun to slow them down. Is that... Yeah. A, 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 oh, okay, let's take a look at the Chrysler again. <laughs> yeah, no, here's her in the Chrysler, just using her feet to do the steering. You don't want to oversteer, but yeah, she just about gets it. I mean, a centimetre away. I don't quite know why the girls got. I never wanted my sled to go up so far because you <laughs> didn't want all the horrible ice to be scratching your runners. However, at the same time, I, I'd have to go and ask them why they're yeah. going all the way up. I don't want to slip on the way back down, but they do have a sled carrier. 
<laughs> Savannah Grable's dog, Kaya, you can see on her sled. Savannah, the rookie in the US team here, and she lay in a very strong 14th place overnight. All three US girls in the top, uh, beg your pardon, no, she was ahead of Annie O'Shea, wasn't she? He was down the bottom outside the 20. She had a good first heat. 5.20, not the fastest starter. Let's see if she can just find a few more hundreds this morning. Yeah, let's see how she gets down here. She's uh, been on the North American Cup since she was 10th and 15th. So, yeah, you know, solid around that kind of top 15, top 10 placing. She hasn't got the fastest start. Um, she's just trying to control it there with her feet, being a little bit messy uh, with her steers there. See her legs coming apart quite a lot, a bit like a uh, Katie Ulander, who's a American slider. That was her kind of um, tradition on the sled, I guess. 67 miles an hour into the Chrysler, 68.7 at the bottom. Fastest as doing 72.3. So she's not catching Kendall Wessenberg, her teammate. They remain 13th and 14th at the moment, 53-2-0. So again. As you say, she only did the two North American races, then Katie Ulender came to Europe, but actually the races that Savannah did in the US means that she has a, a better points position. And Katie Ulender still not fit. She had to go home after the race in Eagles. Truncated her season. So there out of the S4, she was just a bit too high and took that extra knock that you don't want to be taking and then had to fight a little bit down to get the, the perfect line. A little bit high, just taking a knot, but she does control it well and just gets away without taking that second hit. So Savannah Grable, the, the World Championship rookie, second of the US sliders, and our second Russian in the order is Maria Oliver. Another top six starter. Maria, the most experienced of the Russian sliders. 28-year-old from St. Petersburg. Didn't compete in last year's World Championships. Yeah, she's one of our more accomplished uh, sliders. So before uh, the 2015-16 season, there was a race in Altenburg, another of the German tracks, and she actually won it there. So in Europe, she actually has had some really strong performances. Looking good there out of S4, just using her head to steer, looking very calm. That's a perfect line coming out of... Uh, that straight there into the Chrysler. She was only six hundredths of a second behind Savannah Grable of the USA after the first heat, but she started 25 hundredths faster. She's still in front. She's going to move up ahead of the American. She's having a very, very good run here, actually. Um, it's hard then to say because the, as the field goes on, you don't have quite the same conditions of ice as those top 10 athletes. So look, she's moved up two spots. That was one of the best runs we've seen for the last kind of five, six sliders. Yep, 14 fastest slide, 12 fastest slide rather. She moves up, as you say, two places ahead of Kendall Wessenberg and Savannah Graybill. So consistency's always been the key for Maria Oliver. When she got two good runs in in Altenburg, she was uncatchable, but that happens pretty rarely. Yeah, I mean, she is one of our most experienced uh, sliders in the field. She's got a very good, solid, decent start. She gets on that sled well, looks good on the sled and very comfortable. But it's just that consistency. That was the fourth best start in the heat. So, you know, whether she'll be able to shift on up a little bit more with one run to go. Jacqueline Lurling, the leader, a very tight race at the top and all the way down our field. Top Russian Elena Nikitina in 10th place. Her teammate Maria Oliver just moved up to 13th. Well, watching uh, trackside, Jacqueline Narakot's mum and dad, they've come from Brisbane. Want to say good morning, good evening to Steve Anson as well, watching from Townsville in Queensland. A little bit of a drift there out of the start. Uh start there. I've also just seen a little message from our friend Steve Anson. So hello to everyone in Australia. <laughs> uh, it's tonight there, isn't it? Uh, so 16th position 
521 start from Jacqueline Maricot. A little bit skiddy there. She's actually ranked 17th in the World Cup points. So, so far, this is a really good, solid world champs for her. She had to really fight in that Chrysal and then actually did come out clean. But I think she's probably bled a little bit too much speed. Now, can she close on the two American girls in front of her? 16th position. Still on the splits, and she was uh, two tenths behind them, and closes up 52.99. She is now three hundredths behind Savannah Graybill. So that was a good run. 52.99 from Jacqueline Narricott. So she closes on Savannah Graybill, and there's a chance to move up again to get closer to a top ten result. Yeah, it's hard to know with every single nation what the athletes have to do and how they have to perform and, and what their ranking has to be to be able to get that funding. You know, a lot of funding comes from world championships. You can see her had a really good line there out of Chrysler, but I think she'd lost all the speed, you know, in the corners further up. Former bobsleigh break woman for Astrid Lot Wilkinson. So hi to Jackie, hi to Astrid and family. I'm sure they're watching in uh, Australia as well. Lots of Queenslanders. Kristen Bromley, the 2008 World and European Champion, holds the sled for Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands. Kimberly's second of our starters in the first heat. Another new athlete to the Tour a couple of years ago, made her debut in 2015's Worlds. And a 5.14 getaway, a little slower than 5.06 in the first heat. Yeah, she was actually uh, eighth in last year's World Champ, so she has performed very well. Uh, she's going to be wanting to do better than her 17th at the moment, um, but she did make a few mistakes yesterday, so let's have a little look. She was fifth at San Marin, so she can, obviously, when it all goes well, she can get these results. It's just that consistency of doing it. Big hit there out of Chrysal. But That's controlled it well coming out. She was up to 15th place at the going into the Chrysler. She'd moved up a couple of spots. What has that done to her speed at the bottom? She is still in 15th place. Can she carry it to the line? See the shades are down there just the sun. And a 13th fastest run. She does move up to. Good second heat for Kimberly Boss. And as you can probably imagine, with Kristen Bromley at the top there on a Bromley sled. Yeah, she hasn't had quite as much time as some of the other athletes here because she wasn't at the World Cup race two weeks ago. She was doing the World Juniors instead. So she hasn't quite probably had as many runs. So you've got to learn the track so quickly. She just drifted across there and hit a little bit too hard and having to fight. Takes that hit quite hard out of Chrysler because her whole body moves off the sled. Well... A number of these athletes had, might have had a like, slightly nervous first run and they're really starting to move on up. And here's another opportunity for Marina Gilardoni. Uh, she had a bit of a lacklustre first heat, struggling a little bit with injury this season. Like Kimberly Boss, who in fact was a, a youth Olympic medalist driving a bobsleigh, she comes from bobsleigh as well. She was twice a junior world champion as a break woman for Swiss bobsled. And she's got an explosive start. Yeah, she suffered with a back injury for the last few weeks, so she hasn't been starting quite as well as we would expect. Last season, though, she did come third in this event. She's very experienced on these German tracks, having spent quite a lot of time over the years. Fourth place in last year's World Championships as well in Innsbruck. And as you say, she should be second or third in the starters, not 12th or 13th where she is at the moment. So 18th position after the first heat. Her target is Jacqueline Narricott of Australia. Gets a decent exit out of the Chrysler. Yeah, you can see, well, I could hear that she was working quite hard to get out of there. You can just hear the ice. You're, you're listening to all these different senses, the ice, the scraping, how much they're having to steer. Gilardoni comes across the line, still in 18th place. And in fact, she's just under four tenths behind Jacqueline Narricott. So the gap has not closed. A 53 second slide. And that is the second slowest. Only uh, Savannah Grable's 53.2 has been slower this morning. And it is not going to be a glorious World Championships, I'm afraid, for Marina Gilardoni. And when you're struggling with injury, just competing is tough enough. 
So she did have a clean exit there out of uh, Kreisel, but I could hear her having to really fight with the sled. I could hear the ice breaking, uh, listening to the sounds. And when you've already got a back injury, you're going to steer hard to make sure you don't make it worse by slamming into the wall there. And of course, that takes away speed. So Jacqueline Lerling still leads from Tina Herman. Next up is Takako Aguchi of Japan. One of the tiniest athletes in the field struggled so badly in the snow. When you don't have height and weight on your side, it's even harder to be an icebreaker or a snowplow. Let's see what the 32-year-old can produce. 5-2-0 at the start, like everybody else. Four, five hundred slower than their first heat getaway. Yeah, very small, petite athlete here. Tucked really neatly onto that sled. She's actually a former track and field athlete. Just having a little bit of a skid drift across to get to that little point that you want to be aiming to take a tiny hit on. So just the inexperience coming through now. Good exit though, she controls it well around the Kreisel, but then obviously her speed isn't quite the same. She didn't hit the walls, but she had a big skid coming off the Kreisel as well into the labyrinth, and the speed is dropping away. She's our 19th slider, and she's going to lose ground to those in front. A 53.46, well, that's a long way shy of where she would have liked to have been. First heat of 53.48, but uh, most of our sliders have gone two or three tenths of a second faster this morning. Yesterday's ice was fairly damp and soft. Today it's hard and fast. Might just be that Takako Gucci didn't quite have the runner setup she needed. You can see the track there has frosted up a little bit. You can start to see all the little lines of the runners. So the track therefore is slowing that little bit, but the athletes have to make the right decisions with their runners. Now the runners have a different cut on them. So a bit like tires on the car with the grip, you can choose what kind of grip you're gonna take and yeah, making those calls with the conditions, when the conditions are very different on two days, is the experience and the technology. Russia's Renato Kutsina, 22-year-old junior world championship silver medalist three weeks ago. She didn't come and race in the World Cup here, so she's a little behind on experience on this track. And another fast-starting young slider, 5'11", ninth quickest getaway in the field. She was only two hundredths of a second behind Takako Gucci of Japan that we've just seen. Definite need to move up for Renata. Yeah, the Russians all have great, fast, solid starts, but yet they don't manage to quite drive their way uh, down. Whether I know they've been playing around with different sleds, um, it's, it's a very hard thing that they haven't quite managed to, to take it down the rest of the track. Good exit there of Kreisel, though, but is lower down on the speeds. Um, you could just see her having to work quite hard on this sled. Now, she is overhauling Takako Aguchi, and at this end of the field, don't forget, this is the third of four heats. Only the fastest 20 go through into the final run. A 53-3-0. That's two tenths quicker than her first heat yesterday. That moves her up into 19th. Takako Aguchi in the dangerous zone in 20th place. These two might both get bumped out if they're unfortunate but she has put at least one slider behind herself. Yeah, you want to just stay within that 18, 19, 20 to get that final run. She had a good exit there out of Kreisel, just a tiny little skim. So basically for the fourth run, the 20th will go first. So actually they get the best ice when it comes to that fourth run and can move up quite a few places. Top 20 are down. Jacqueline Lerling, Tina Herman and Lizzie Arnold in the medals positions with one slide to come. But the big movers up, Lizzie Arnold and Anna Fernstedt of Germany challenging for the podium. Outside the top 20 overnight, Anna O'Shea of the USA and Annie needs a big start. 5.02 in the first heat. She gets a 5.07. The start track is a little slower this morning, so that's a good getaway. But she had a horrible exit of the Chrysler in the team competition, slammed into the wall again in her first heat yesterday, and she gets S4 wrong. 
Yeah, she is such an experienced uh, slider. She's been around for so many years, but she has a big history of this Chrysler on this track. She has crashed many times out of here. Badly in the team comp there, she's nailed it, but I think she didn't have quite that speed having hit. She could have therefore oversteered it because she did nail it. And it's really hard letting the sled run, not steering too much. Every time you steer, you are kind of breaking the ice. Across the line in 19th place, 15th fastest run. That might be the most important trip she's made all week. She gets Chrysler tidied up. If she'd hit the wall then, she would have been out of the final heat. As it is, she is in. Renata Kutsina gets pushed down to 20th. And Takako Aguchi is on the bench for the final run. Yeah, she's ninth in World Cup points, so she shouldn't really be down in this 15th position. She is clearly struggling a little bit with this track. That S-bend, you know, you really don't want to be taking that hit, you know, as soon as you come out. And you can see she's disappointed. We know she's a better slider than what her position says. Some tracks athletes really gel with, some they don't. Donna Crichton needs to gel now with this track in Koenigsegg in 22nd place overnight. And she is three tenths behind Renata Kutsina. She needs a big slide. And this might be the final run of the season for her. So needs to just allow the speed to flow. Yeah, she was actually at the cutoff yesterday going into the second run. She was 20 second off, and that's when the jury actually came out and said, you know what, we're stopping the sled. So she didn't get that second run. She therefore is a little bit more rested. Let's see what her start is. She normally has a very fast start time. 5.09, identical to her first heat, and she's the first slider who's actually matched their first heat start. Let's watch her in the S-bends here. Does she get a perfect exit out of S4 and down into the straight? Just a bit of a big skid there, taking that hit. Fighting a little bit, but manages to get through that second half. Now, if she can carry speed out of the Chrysler, then she will have a chance to make it into the final heat. Little touch on the wall and a skid afterwards. She was a uh, 66.5 in the Chrysler, three miles an hour down and still 22nd on the splits. I'm afraid that she is not going to make it into the final heat. So Donna Crichton will come in in 22nd position at the line with a 53-46 slide. So she too will be joining us at the side of the track to watch the fourth and final heat of three, if you get my drift. Yeah, I think she was having to really steer hard in that Chrysler. Her legs were coming apart. Didn't help having that skid coming out of S4. You've always got to come out and just be so relaxed on the sled. Big thank you to everyone back at home. You can see that hit there, and she's having to then fight with her legs, constantly having little tiny uh, skids as her sled comes through at a different angle. Very skiddy down in the labyrinth and taking a little bit more speed out. And that might be the last heat we see from Donna Crichton. Maria Maslow of Romania has an even bigger mountain to climb. She's nearly three tenths out of the top 20 after our first day of action. And for all these athletes now, the gaps for salvation become more and more substantial and less and less achievable. So again, they're pretty tight together. There are lots of places you can pick off. Yeah, at the moment, these girls are just fighting to all get into that top 20. They all want another run. She's managed to get through there well, but she's having to work quite hard, not making her sled skid there, using her feet. Oh. One foot has just come straight up. Whether she hurt that somehow or hit her toe funny, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure I've ever seen that before in a car. Maybe that's a new technique of steering. Seen a, a lot of knee work going on there, but never with the foot up like a rudder. And you might be right, actually. She, she, looked, she wanted to drag her left toe there and then picked it up again because it looked like she'd hurt it a little. 53-62. So she doesn't improve her position on Donna Crichton, drops her back a little further. She'll be in 23rd spot, or remains in 23rd spot. But behind her, Joska Leconte, only a tenth slower, with more experience perhaps than Maria Mazalou of Romania. There's Doreen Velikou, her teammate, who'll race tomorrow. Yeah, very strange why she just lifts up that knee there. 
unless she suddenly got cramp in her hamstring. Do you know that's exactly that's a what I was saying? I'd be doing that if I'd got cramp. Could that be it? Yeah. So I don't know. We didn't quite see. There's a corner just before going into that cries or that we didn't see. So well, also, I'd happen. be limping. From yeah, cramp. she looks okay there. Okay. So uh, that's a little mystery to us until we actually speak to her. Well, it didn't get her into the fourth heat, so There's it didn't Oscar work well. There, just Yoska. taking a, yep. a moment before she puts her helmet on. Jossi Lecant of the Netherlands, teammate Kimberly Boss, is well up the order in the oh, yes. top on. dozen. Go, 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 so again, Kristen Bromley at the top of the track. was talking to Kristen about building sleds the other day. He said he had finished his doctorate, built his first sled before he'd ever been to a nice track. He said that didn't go that well. Theory is one thing in this sport, practice is another. So Joska used to come around with us. Uh, we kind of adopted her and she used to share hotel rooms with all of us and uh, had the same coaching as Mickey Grunberger when he was my coach, the Austrian coach now. So she's now gone off into these small nations, getting coached by different people. An experienced slider, she has been around on the circuit for many, many years, but has never quite managed to um, move on up too much into that almost top 15. The Oscar Lacan, 29 years old, 15th last season in Eagles. And as she comes across the line, she is up to 20 seconds, so she's picked off a couple. They were a very close group in front of her. And she moves up. Renata Kutzina still in 20th place. Looks like she will get a final run. Joske Lecant moves ahead of Maria Matsalu of Romania and ties with Donna Crichton for 22nd spot. Yeah, she's going to be disappointed with that because she's ranked 16th in the World Cup point. So, you know, ideally for a world champ, you want to be at least what you are in your World Cup overall rankings, if not obviously better. Big height exiting the Kreisel, and that took some of her speed away, but she moves up to tie Donna Crichton for 22nd as we get to our junior world champion. So Russia's Yulia Kanakina has been part of the World Cup for the last couple of seasons and went away to Sigulda in Latvia to win the Junior Worlds three weeks ago, which means she missed out on the World Cup race here, and that showed in her first drive. She was not anywhere where she'd like to be. Great start time with a 4.98, our third fastest wow. so far today. She also was sprinting on the other side of the sled, but in that same groove, but gets a really good straight line into that first corner. Very small and petite line on the sled. Comes into the from a very unusual sporting background. Ever seen a ballet dancer slide skeleton before? I haven't, but hey, she's a quick starter. So obviously very powerful. We now need to see how she can drive the sled. She's obviously got not as much experience as the others. Takes that big hit coming out of Kreisel because of that pressure build up on the end. Kanakana 20th in last year's World Championships in Eagles in Austria. Yeah, I think here's an athlete that if she could piece it together, learning, taking the years to learn the different tracks, uh, learning more about the technical side of the sport, then add that together with that phenomenal start, then we could have an athlete of the future here. But it takes many years to be able to learn that. This is her third senior world championships and comes in this year as the junior world champion. 1-2 with Renata Kutzina, who still is in 20th place, but two Horrible runs for Yulia Kanakina. It's this Kreisel again. She's never quite managed to get out very well in all of these different trainers. She's really trying to steer, but just there tapping her feet, mm. it's not enough. She needs to do more with her shoulders, know where she is. Therefore, she's too high and takes this massive hit coming out. Horrible. That really, <laughs> uh, really horrible. <laughs> struggling looking. to even hold on to yeah. the sled there. The Russians went through a phase about five years ago of chopping with the toes instead of dragging to try and reduce the friction but, but get that steer. And that little toe chop, haven't seen that for a while from a Russian slider. And it didn't work for it. Well, we've got the 2010 Olympic champion in the booth, the 2014 Olympic champion in third. This is the 2006 women's skeleton Olympic champion. Six years away from sliding, Maya Pedersen is back. Yeah, incredible that she's back. She was my idol that I looked up to because she always had the most 
perfect form that never broke. You know, you want to be tucked into your sled with your sh shoulders low, head down, feet together, and that is Maya. However, obviously she's come back. She is now one of the smallest, lightest sliders on the season, even though she's got the most amount of experience. So let's see how she gets on. She knows exactly this uh, track, having done it many years, having a really good run here, struggling then with the ice conditions because it is quite clearly frosted up and isn't as quick as what the top fastest girls would have had. Well, she's regenerating Norway's skeleton program with husband Snorri Pedersen, who slid for Norway. Of course, in her winning days, she was a medalist and Olympic champion for Switzerland, her home country, Maya Bieri. Marbieri Peterson, and she comes up two spots, so she picks off Yulia Kanakina and Maria Matsalu, but she is absolutely tiny. I mean, Amy, you're not the tallest person in the world, but she is so tiny. She's very, very small, and actually, having a look at everyone's stats, it's about 20 kilograms uh, less in weight than our top girls, and that's just the change of sport now, I think, and it's very hard to then be able to get down if someone is, is that much heavier than you. She is clearly a very very good driver and has got so much experience. 54 kilos she weighs. Waving the union flag there in the red and blue hat, that is your youth Olympic champion in girls skeleton from 2016. So we've got four women's Olympic champions in the venue today. Katie Tannenbaum next up for the Virgin Islands. Phil, the coach for the emerging nations holding the sled for her and Katie 27th place after the first day's competition. She's a mathematician, don't get too many of them in sliding sports either. 531 getaway, just three hundreds of a second away from her first start. Looks good on the sled, looks very calm actually, she had good position. In fact, she's a lecturer in mathematics at the University of the Virgin Islands. Drifting across a little bit too much there, but keeping it together. 27th place after the first runs now. Can she get to Yulia Kanakina? Gets a much less painful exit. Will she overhaul the junior world champion? The Russian is in her sights at the moment. She was only four tenths behind, and Kanakina had a really tough run. This is a good, solid run from her, actually. Better than her first one yesterday. And across the line, she comes up just a little shy of Yulia Kanakina. So 27 spot at the moment with a 53-95 slide from Katie Tannenbaum. Well, Maya Peterson showed that if you've got the knowledge and you can feel the fluence, and Maya's got an awful lot more track experience here than pretty much anybody in the field, apart from maybe the top three or four, you can still move up. Katie needs a few more runs here. Well, she'll go from this sunshine back to the Virgin Islands. That won't be too bad, 30 plus degrees before heading maybe to Korea for the final World Cup of the season. Yeah, it's quite unusual to have a World Cup race after a World Champs. Normally a World Champs is the very end race of the season, but they're all heading off, off on the plane to get some time on the Olympic track. A world championship rookie, Valentina Margallo from Italy. And Valentina, just 23 years old, former 100 meter runner and a bobsledder. She was fifth in the 2012 Youth, Youth Olympic Games as a bobsled break woman, and then stepped away, came back as a skeleton slider. And she's never slid in the World Cup. And she's very inexperienced. She's only been to Koenigsegg once before in her career. Yeah, it can take uh, many, many runs down a track to learn. You can see there she's having to use her feet a lot. She's probably already thinking about the cries or and hoping that she gets out OK. These athletes only get three days of training. So that's six runs to learn a track. And when you haven't ever been to a track before, trying to learn anywhere from 14 to 18 corners in only six runs is a really, really hard thing to do. And that's why uh, the more experienced sliders have a, a big advantage. Well, she wouldn't even need to take her socks off to count the number of runs she's had down this track. She can do that on the fingers of two hands. So she's way behind in terms of experience. And when you have to be correct to a hundredth of a second on the steer to get the right line, you need that experience. 
Yeah, then you're kind of working out. I want to be one centimetre further to the right going into corner six. Little tiny adjustments like that that the more experienced people will be able to do. And yet someone who isn't just can't even get to that uh, exact level. She's just fighting her way through there, fighting against those skids. She's trying Comes to keep out. the sled straight. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't hit, but you can see she's actually skidding off the corner, which is actually breaks, skidding, skidding down and taking away that uh, speed. Oh, she's got that big smile at the bottom of the track, Valentina. Next up, Marta Olovska. Third World Championships for her, but again, relatively inexperienced. She's only ever slid in Europe in European Cup races. Just 23 years old, Marta. Oh, takes the completely other uh, side of that uh, start groove, which just gives her a terrible start there. She completely drifted across and is already fighting to even get into that first corner. She did skeleton school as recently as 2014, so that's how little experience she's got on ice. A lot of these women in the field were veterans in the World Cup in 2014-15 when she was taking her first tentative steps. Yeah, I'm taking a very big hit there, but you can see she's kind of just not looking comfortable on the sled. She was skidding a lot. It could be her body position, that tension in the body. If you're too tense on the sled, you're not going to work at one. And so then you and your sled are almost fighting each other. Um, you've got to become friends. Uh, be relaxed on the sled, which is a very hard thing to do when you're clearly nervous and anxious about a track and about certain corners. Your fellow Olympic champion, John Montgomery, has a theory that if he put his sled with a sack of potatoes that weighed the same as him, it would be down faster because it would argue less with what the sled wanted to do. Yeah, uh, arguing with your sled is quite a big thing. I, <laughs> that's why I always named mine. You've got to become... You can see how right. high she was on that oscillation. So it's no wonder she comes down so dramatically. And as you can see... A big scorpion uh, body shape there, and you've got no chance to control that. Steve Anson just sent me a, a shot 20 years ago, December 96, a ladies' cup race where a young Swiss slider called Maya Bieri was racing, and she is doing it again 20 years later. Maria Montejano of Spain, another one of Martin Rettel's badass training team alumni. Her first World Cup season coming towards its conclusion in Korea and her third World Championship. She went to Winterberg and to Eagles. Yeah, she's obviously been coached well. She's got very good form on the sled, looks good, feet together. It's now just uh, the experience of getting down. A good exit there from S4, but then is just using her foot and actually caused herself to go into a skid. These athletes are steering with their head, their shoulders, their knees and their feet. Either all of those combinations or maybe just one. You can see her head is coming quite high up because she wants to look to see where she's going. That's just the inexperience and knowledge and being comfortable on a sled. Yeah, you see the most knowledgeable at the front of the field with their head tucked right down, barely looking where they're going because they can feel they're in the right place. And when you ha don't have that experience, then you don't have that opportunity. So 29th fastest run doesn't quite get to Marta Olowska of Poland. One hundredth of a second behind her. And where could that hundredth or two hundredths to move up have come from? Well, pretty much from anywhere. But big smile as ever from Maria Montagliano. And not a bad exit from the Kreisel. Head up, well, certainly where she's Got a head up looking where she's going. That's a few hundreds of a second, maybe a tenth all the way down the track. So, again, a bit more experience, a bit more knowledge, and everybody starts to pick up speed. Final sled is Maria's best mate in sliding, Sara Lovrencic. The Slovenian was in the World Championships in Winterberg two years ago. She was at Eagles last year, but she was working as a physio with the Belgian team, taking a year away to earn money to continue her journey towards Pyeongchang in Korea 2018. So this is another one of those steps. And the final slider in the third heat of the Women's Skeleton World Championships. So Lavrencic, 
the last on the ice and a 5.55 getaway, 5.52 in the first heat. So like almost everybody, two or three hundredths of a second away from her first start. That start track has not lubed up at all this morning in this first heat. It'll be been a part of an hour until they start going again in the final run. So we might see it get quicker. And again, Sarah, a little skiddy down the bend away. Big height in the Kreisel. Can she get a clean exit? She does, but a long skid. Long skid, because she kept that steer on, having to steer so hard to get around there. Trying to close on her friend. She is in 31st place on the split. She's not going to catch Maria Montechiano at the line. She does it with a 55-91. And that rounds out the action for the third and penultimate run of this Women's Skeleton World Championships. So Sarah Lavrencic will get changed into her civvies and be watching trackside as the final heat goes down because we now cut our field to the fast 20 and they will go in reverse order. The leader last on ice to decide the medals in this Women's Skeleton World Championship. So well done to Sarah and to everybody. Gets away without too much of a hit from the Kreisel, but that ding on the wall out of S4 did the damage. And tucks her head, she's waiting for the drift to end as she comes down into the labyrinth. So Sarah Lavrencic rounds out the third heat of the Skeleton World Championships. Making sure that she and her sled are up to weight and then we will go into the final heat. Jacqueline Lurling had six hundreds of a second overnight. She's opened that up to fifteen hundreds. But in third position is Lizzie Yandel, the Great Britain, 24 hundreds back. She moved up from fourth with a scintillating third heat. Amy Williams, I think the medals are still wide open. I think they are, because Lizzie Arnold actually had the fastest run there of the day so far. So she is only 24 hundredths behind Jacqueline there. Anything can happen if Lizzie can keep her head together. You know what? Look how close she is to maybe getting a silver. Let's see who can keep it together on the very final run. This track is tricky and it doesn't suit everyone. <laughs> Two youngsters, Anna Fernstedt and Kim Marmont in the top half dozen. Yelena Nikita in the top Russian in 10th. Laura Dees 11th. Jane Channel in 12th position. Ahead of the two Americans moved Maria Oliver. And Kimberly Boss also sneaked ahead of Savannah Graybill on that third run. Jacqueline Narricott, Marina Gilardoni, Annie O'Shea jumped up into the top 20. And Renata Kutsina rounds it out behind them from Takako Gucci and Donna Crichton on down. They will join the rest of the fans trackside on a stunning day here in deepest Bavaria. We are close to the small town of Berchtesgaden, the home of German ice sliding. Join us, please, for the final run with Amy Williams, the FIBT TV crew, and me, Martin Haven as we decide the Women's Skeleton World Championships.